All right, so today I'm going to go over why I think hard pads are the secret to next level aim. The best pads, like the Artisan line, in my mind, they're essentially trying to be like hard pads. And by that, I mean, they have this tight, small, uniform stitching that's supposed to give them a lower static friction. And then they have the high dynamic friction with the softer bases, if you get those ones. So what's wrong with static friction, and what exactly is it? Well, static friction is the friction you must overcome to start moving the mouse. Static friction, if you know your physics, is higher than the dynamic friction, or the friction of something already in motion. Static friction means that small movements like a shake or a jitter or a twitch might be ignored. Now, this is actually something that people desire to an extent in their mouse pads, but normally they desire the second form of this ignoring of inputs. So the second form is the dynamic friction. And the way that these control pads achieve a higher dynamic friction is with the soft bases that you can press the mouse into. And in this way, the friction gradually increases as you press harder and harder, right? So that's the basic concept behind the control pads and why they have such a good reputation. And this form of control is under your control in that you can press into it. But high dynamic friction is supposed to smooth out the imperfections in your aim. That's the idea. So the next concept is that of stopping power. Stopping power is how quickly your mouse will stop moving when there's no other inputs. And here's the thing though. You do put other inputs into the mouse. I assume everybody is using counterflexing of the opposite muscles that they were using to move the mouse to then stop the mouse. And if you pay attention, you might even press into the pad on a really sharp or fast flick. Even if you don't use that pressing, if you press in one, you're going to apply some pressure, and this also helps stop the mouse in time. So now that we talked about the background concepts, onto the flaws. The weave of a cloth pad, even if it's super high quality, it'll change, it'll loosen, it'll fray over time, and that'll change the static and dynamic friction. The padded base also will unevenly wear and compress, and that'll change how the dynamic friction interacts with your mouse. And even things like humidity will change the way that your pad will feel. And one of the bigger ones is the surface will dirty, and this leads to those dreaded slow spots. Now, you could alleviate this to an extent by washing. You could take your mouse pad, wash it with some dish soap or whatever, and you hope that you don't ruin the pad, you dry it out, you hope that the base is still sticky. But eventually, no matter how well you take care of your pad, the mouse pad that you love and paid a lot for will lose its former glory, and you'll have to replace it. Now, how often this is varies, but for me, I was finding that after just a month or two on a cloth pad, I really didn't like the way that it was feeling. So as the title spoiled, what's the alternative? The alternative is these hard pads. And I'm not talking about cloth pads that are very stiff or don't have a lot of padding in them. I'm talking about hard surfaces. They're made out of entirely stiff material. So my first experience with a hard pad was with an aluminum pad. Now the aluminum pads, what they have going for them is they're cheap and they're somewhat readily available. I got one off of Amazon. It was like $15, but, and it was very high quality, very nice base, very sticky rubber base, very good surface. But the issue with these is that they, they tarnish and they wear, they're prone to scratching really bad. Now mine didn't really, I think I had one minor scratch and that was when I set my metal headset on it, dragged it, made a little scratch. It really bothered me too much, but those will like destroy your uh, mouse feet quickly if you get scratches in them. And the main issue with these pads, they might have potential if you clean them a lot to get the tarnish off, but there's no big pads that I could find. There was none that were even normally sized, and my pad was rather small. And that means you have to make some concessions, like raising your scents. So then there's other options like the Sarah pad kin, but this pad introduces the problems of the cloth pads, but doesn't really get you the benefits of the hard pad as much as I would, I would like. And by that, I mean, these Sarah pads, they're made out of ceramic, and they're supposed to have more friction because of that, but the friction is loaded in that static friction. And they're also well known to wear inconsistently over time. I've heard of users scrubbing the edges of the pad to wear it so that it's consistent across the pad. And of course that helps, but that's not going to fix the issue. So really at this point, there's only one pad that I'm talking about when I say hard pads, and that's the sky pad. So I'll recommend a pad that's somewhat of a hybrid and an entry into this space later, but for now we'll talk about the sky pad. So what makes these glass pads so special? Are they really worth over hundred USD? Well, no, not really, honestly. But that's more of an issue with a lack of competition and a lack of demand in this space. If more people like these pads and there's more people producing these pads, honestly, I can't imagine that the cost of producing these pads is much over $10. So that's as low as we could possibly see the price point go down to. But we'll talk about the benefits for now, ignoring the high price tag. So with a glass pad, there's almost zero static friction. 
this will depend on how well you clean the pad and how you upkeep that and the quality of your mouse skates and the weight of your mouse. But for the most part, it has what most users would say is zero static friction. Now, we mentioned static friction before, but we didn't really get into explaining why it's actually so terrible for your aim. When there's static friction, your brain will learn and literally shape itself to learn that some movements are ignored. And your muscles even will innervate to make jerky movements. And the reason being is that to overcome the static friction, you have to jerk your mouse, and then once it's moving, then you try to glide, right? But to overcome that braking force, you develop that jerky aim. And your mouse movements become disconnected from the inputs that you think that you're making in moving the mouse. I think a lot of people, they start out on these moderate pads, de develop the tendency to have jerky, shaky aim, and they look to solve it with the control pads. And the control pads, they do smooth out those jerks, they make your aim good for a while, and you might even achieve new levels of aiming, but eventually you'll adapt to that new level of muting of the inputs. And if you go and you try a speed pad again, it'll feel even more horrible, even if your aim skill is increased. So what they do is they push their sense lower, they get more and more muddy pads, and eventually they reach a sort of equilibrium or maybe even a stagnation where that smoothing of the pad and their setup is outweighing the jerkiness of their aim. But with the glass pad, it's hard to learn how to aim on it, but I believe it's the right way to learn. But with these pads, every tiny movement you make will be seen. And that is bad at first. And so I guess this is the point to mention. If you're not grinding your aim, you know, you play on the weekends, you play a couple hours, whatever, stick with the high quality cloth pads. It's probably going to last long enough that you avoid all of those problems. If you barely, barely play on it, the longevity of the pad and that niceness of the, the new cloth pad will stay a lot longer. But anyways, with this new sensitivity your mouse movements will have to your inputs, you'll find that your aim starts out to be terrible. However, you, if you push through that, what happens to your aim then? Well, you learn to control movements more precisely. Your muscles change their activation patterns. And you might grow more what they call uh, smooth muscle. So there's like fast twitch muscle and there's smooth muscles. Might be too much off topic, but basically you optimize your brain and your body for that fine motor control. And it is possible to aim well on these pads. I could list a whole number of aimers that have done this, but it is a journey. So instead of having jerky aim, you'll start to match what you want to do with your mouse more one-to-one -one with what your arm's actually doing. So that synchronization is where you can really achieve these new levels of aiming. The ability to micro-correct micro and the speed and ease of these corrections will also mean that your precision goes through the roof and your reactivity goes beyond what others on these clock pads can really achieve. Now, of course, you have to put in the work, so just to mention that. But this is a characteristic of some of the best users of these sky pads, and it's something that's somewhat well-known. Some people, they can easily identify a glass pad user, but I wish there was a, a term coin. They'll often say, though, that these people are glass pad abusers or something along those lines. And that's what they mean is this highly reactive aim, and once you get really good on it, the precision where it seems that you have more control than the best control pad can offer you. Now, onto another point that people make is that dynamic friction. So, surely if you are a flick aimer, these pads would be useless, right? You can't be precise on these pads? Well, that couldn't be farther from the truth. In reality, the first thing that's going to be in your favor is how little effort it takes to put the mouse into motion. So what does that mean? It means, likewise, there's little effort in stopping that motion. There's even so little effort in controlling the flick that you can do a micro-correction mid-flick like no clock pad user can really achieve. With a clock pad, to change directions, you have to stop the mouse from a state of motion, overcome the static friction to then reverse your mouse, go back over the threads that you might have just moved in the opposite direction, so there might be increased resistance, there might be the pressure of that stopping, if, that, if that's an issue for you. But essentially, it's very hard to do those micro-corrections mid-flick. And... So you might be able to stop the mouse, but that's somewhat the limit of your control in the flick. There's also a misconception about these sky pads that, or there's a misconception about the control pads, that somehow the control pad is aiming for you. Now, as far as I know, even the softest pad users, they're still using counter flexing of the muscles to stop in reverse directions, and they're using that press control. So the fact that the mouse will stop moving on its own isn't really a factor in the aiming there. You're not letting the mouse glide to a stop when you do a flick, as, as far as I know. So the second technique that I just mentioned is that of the press stopping. And I believe it's even more powerful on the glass pads. Since the mouse takes so little force to get moving, it also takes a little force to stop it. And so with a sharp press, a quick sharp press into the glass pad, you can stop the mouse, much like a control user could. And so then you can stop it on a 
particular pixel and have that pixel perfect aim. Or you can use your, your muscles. When you start using these glass pads, you'll basically you'll lock your muscles in to achieve that flake and that precision. So you also don't have to worry about the consistency as the friction of the pad will be the same at any point. And it's also really predictable how the friction will interact with your mouse and how you move your, your mouse. So related to this is the idea that glass pads have no friction. Now there's still some dynamic friction there to help, but it's much less. And the press control while moving is still there and it's really reliable being that it's that glass pad. But this is something that I recommend strongly to avoid. There's a tendency of new users to press into the pad to try to get back that control. And they really like wear out the muscles that way. And you're really not learning the mouse control as you're supposed to, where you learn that organically. So you have that tool in your arsenal, but you should use it very sparingly. Less than a cloth pad user would use that. You should be relying on other techniques and trying to refine those. And another complaint that to me it seems kind of baseless, but I'll address it, is the cleaning of the pad and the fact that you have to wear a sleeve. So first off, I think everyone should wear a sleeve, to be honest. It drastically increases the lifespan of your cloth, cloth pads as well, because even if you can't see the grime that your bare skin is putting onto the cloth pad and the grease and whatnot, it's still there, and eventually you're going to feel it. And by that point, it'll be really terrible in terms of like those slow spots and the inconsistency, and so you can wash it and whatever. But with the glass pad, cleaning it, is as simple as just have a microfiber cloth handy and just give it a 10 second wipe down, you know, a couple times a day. And I'd rather have that option of instantly restoring the pad to really exactly the same as the first day I bought it than not have the, the option. And so I think you should wear a sleeve. And you, even if you do wear a sleeve, which is, is again, that's because your skin will stick to the glass pad a little bit more than it would stick to a cloth pad. Now, both do have some resistance. And again, I recommend both to wear the sleeve, but the other reason is that oil that you deposit on the, the glass pad, you know, kind of gross, I know, but even with the sleeve, you're going to have some cleaning to do, but yeah, that, I don't think those are issues. So now as you adapt to these pads, I also would recommend take your sense and bring it back up into those higher ranges. If you kept lowering your sense to get that control, I also recommend look for a lightweight mouse and even maybe try learning a more versatile grip, like a fingertip grip. These changes, they're made feasible on the, these sky pads, and specifically the fingertip grip is something that I'm working towards. Because on these pads, because there's less of that resistance to the small movements, you can actually use the fingertip grip without just completely wearing out your joints and your muscles and your fingers. And it's really easy to make those small controlled movements. Related to this, in general, whether you're fingertip aiming or arm aiming or whatever, the endurance of your aiming, like how long you can go in a session, will increase. Because there's less of that resistance, maybe you drop the weight of the mouse down, and, you know, generally the endurance will increase on these pads. Um, related to that, I also re recommend to anyone really, but or any aimer really, uh, to do daily wrist and arm stretches. Specifically on the glass pad, I find it really smooths out my aim for the day. And so I definitely recommend doing those, those stretching if you have the glass pad. What I mean by that is if I forget to do my stretchings, I find my muscles are kind of a little bit stiffer and I'll try to press in more than I should into the pad. And I'll just generally get worse, worse aim. But then I do a little stretching, warm up the muscles, and I'm back to that smooth control. Okay, so the entry into the space, the pad that I promised to introduce, is called the Dancer Ice Pad. You can look it up, but it's a fiberglass infused cloth pad with less of a, a, a soft base. It's more of a stiff base, but it has that low static friction. You have some dynamic friction, and it has some of the best of both of those sections, the cloth and the hard pad without many of the downsides of either. Sounds good, but honestly, I can't really say that I recommend it because I really believe in the superiority of these glass pads. But those pads, they are a hybrid of these two. So if you want to look into that, you can look into those into that pad. Uh, in general though, I don't really recommend these like coated pads. The difference with this one, it's pretty durable. I, I have the pad, I don't really use it, don't really like it, but it's pretty durable because the fiberglass is infused into it. And that's the property of these sky pads that you're going to really like is that you buy one sky pad, unless you drop something on it, you never have to buy a scan pad again. So 100 bucks, five years later, you're still using the same pad. Anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. If you liked it, sub to the channel for more content like this.